For more physics related videos, please subscribe. Welcome to the Physics Almanac. In this video, I'm going to go over how to solve projectile motion problems involving range. I will go over two examples, an easy one and a hard one. But don't worry, the hard one is not that difficult. I'm still rating the physics level in this video as easiest. So, as with all projectile motion problems, we start off with our three kinematic equations. If you want to know how to get these, I derived those in a previous video. Now, all projectile motion problems will involve an initial velocity followed by a parabolic trajectory until the ball lands on the ground. Now, whenever you're dealing with a range problem, you should immediately recognize that this involves when the ball lands on the ground. So the range is the horizontal distance traveled once the ball has hit the ground. So at this moment, this means that the vertical position of the ball, which I'm calling y here, will equal whatever the position of the ground is in your coordinate system. Oftentimes, this will be y equals zero if you're setting the ground to be at a height of zero. This does not have to be the case, but it is often convenient to set the ground at height equals zero. So now, all we have to do is solve the kinematics equations, given the fact that your y position equals the ground. So let's do an example. First off, an easy example. A ball is kicked off the ground with an initial speed of 40 meters per second and at an angle of 50 degrees above the horizontal. How far away will the ball land? Now, in a previous video, I went over five steps to solve every projectile motion problem. I'm not going to explain them in detail in this video. If you want a more detailed explanation, you can watch that video. The first step is to draw the situation. In our case, we have a ball starting on the ground being kicked up. It will follow a parabolic trajectory until it lands back on the ground some distance further away. The ball has an initial velocity, which means it's got initial speed and is kicked off in some direction, which I'm calling theta. And the range will be the change in horizontal position once the ball lands on the ground. Step two is to write down our knowns and unknowns. Remembering that there are a total of five variables in every projectile motion problem. The x position, the y position, the initial x velocity, the y velocity, and time. And remember that the x velocity is constant, so it's the only one here that does not depend on time. Now, what are we told in this problem? First, we're told that the initial velocity is 40 meters per second at an angle theta of 15 degrees above the horizontal. We're not given any information involving the time, nor do we know the distance the ball has traveled. Now, recall that velocity is a vector. It's an arrow that points in some direction. And that arrow has an x component and a y component. Given that we're told the magnitude of the vector, which is the speed, and the angle at which it's pointing, theta, we can find that the x velocity is equal to v naught cosine theta, and the initial y velocity is equal to v naught sine theta. Now it's good to ask yourself, is this a when question or a where question? In this case, we're being asked how far away the ball will land. And we're not given any information about time, nor are we being asked about time. So this is a where question. We also want to set up where we're going to set height equals zero. In this case, I'm going to set the ground to be a height of zero. This is often the most convenient setup. If you're finding this video helpful so far, please like and subscribe. Maybe share it with some of your classmates and friends. Step three is to note what is being asked in the question. And does this question involve one of these special points? In our case, we're being asked what the range is. So we want to know what delta x is. And because this is a range problem, we're asking about the landing point. So yes, this is one of the three special points. It's good to note these special points because most projectile problems you'll see will involve one of them, although they don't have to. Our condition for this point is that y equals zero. Step four is to separate your horizontal and vertical equations. We have three kinematics equations, one for the x direction and two for the y direction. You want to make sure you don't mix these up and solve these two directions separately. Now we've got everything we need and we can go about solving the kinematics equations, making sure that we don't plug in numbers until the very end, unless one of those numbers is zero. You don't want to plug in your numbers until you get something of the form, the thing we're asking for equals a bunch of stuff we already know. Since our condition is y equals zero, let's start off with the y position. Here I've substituted v naught sine theta into v naught y, because what we're given are v naught and sine theta. 
Now this equation involves time and we don't have any information on time nor are we being asked about time. So we have to go about eliminating time from our kinematics equations. So first thing we're gonna do is we're going to solve for time. Now notice in this case we have two terms and both have time in them. One has a time to the first power and one time squared. So we can factor time out from this equation and now we have two solutions for time. Time equals zero and time equals 2 v naught sine theta over g. These are the two times the ball will be at height zero. Time equals zero is the initial point. That's when the ball is being kicked. It just means it started off on the ground. That's not the solution we care about. We care about when the ball lands. Now we have the time at which the ball lands in terms of quantities we know. But don't plug in numbers yet because time is not what we're being asked for. What we're being asked for is the x position at that time. So we can now go to the x equation and substitute in our expression for time. Now we have an equation of the form, the thing we're being asked for, the range, delta x, equals a bunch of stuff we already know. So we can go ahead and plug in our numbers and find that the range is 82 meters. And that's the answer. Now this example is particularly easy because the initial point and the final point have the same height. In this case, height equals zero. If the initial point and final point have different heights, then it gets a little bit more complicated, but it's still fairly simple. So now let's take a look at a range problem where the ball does not start on the ground. In this problem, a ball is thrown from a height of 2 meters above the ground with an initial speed of 40 meters per second at an angle of 15 degrees above the horizontal. And we want to know how far away the ball will land in this case. Notice everything here is the same as the previous problem. We're just starting at a height of 2 meters instead of on the ground. So I'm not going to go through every step. Instead, I'm just going to jump to the point where this problem differs from the previous one. So every step here so far was the same as the previous problem. The only difference is we're now starting at a height of y naught, which we're told is 2 meters. Now we have to go ahead and solve this, given that our initial height is not 0. So last time when we plugged into the y equation, we had this delta y is equal to 0. But in this case, since we didn't start at height 0, our change in y is not zero. Delta y is the change in y position. Our change in y is in fact negative y naught. We started at y naught and then we've gone down by height of negative y naught. I'm now gonna move the negative y naught to the left hand side of the equation. And now we have a quadratic equation. The time t no longer factors out nicely as it did in the previous problem. But we can solve for time using the quadratic formula. This gives us two solutions. Which solution do we take? Well, if we think about it, this is a parabola, and we're asking when does this parabola cross the line y equals zero? The math doesn't really care what's actually going on. It's just looking for a solution to this parabola. Well, we have a solution here, and if we were to extend this parabola, it would cross back here. This is essentially at a time before the ball was thrown. And this would be an earlier time to the landing time. So that would be the negative solution. In fact, you can take a look here. The quantity in here, inside this square root, is v naught squared plus some number that is positive, because y naught is positive. So v naught sine theta minus a number that's larger than v naught sine theta will always be negative. So that gives us a negative time. That means this solution is to a time prior to time equals zero, which is when we threw the ball. So we know that we want the positive solution. Now don't be fooled here, not every projectile motion problem will involve the positive solution. So you have to think about what's going on to figure out which solution you're looking for. Now that we know the time at which the ball lands, we can now plug that into our x equation because remember, that's what we're looking for. Because this equation for time is fairly complicated, I'm not gonna write it out, I'm just gonna put it times t, remembering that we know what t is. We have all the information we need to find it. And now we have an equation of the form delta x, the thing we're looking for, equals a bunch of stuff we already know. So we can plug the numbers in to find that delta x equals 89 meters. And that's it. This was a little bit more difficult than the previous problem where we started off at a height of zero, but ultimately it's not that difficult. You just have to know the quadratic formula. In the next video, we're going to be looking at problems involving initial conditions. So if you found this video helpful and would like to see more physics-related videos, please be sure to like and subscribe, 
and click the bell to be notified for the release of future physics videos. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.